A major hit piece on Wim Hof came out saying that he physically abused his family. Scott Carney speculates that Wim Hof may have killed his first wife. And the Wim Hof movie has been suspended. Let's get into it. So first up, the Volksgrant wrote this hit piece on Wim Hof. And this article was written by... Anna K. Stoffelin, once again, there's like a 0% chance that I am pronouncing her name right, but let's just bring up a picture of her on the screen. Now, does this look like the face of someone that would write a hit piece about the most famous biohacker in the world? Does this look like the face of someone that would write a hit piece on a rich, successful man who's helped improve the lives of millions and millions of people? I don't know. And sometimes you just have to ask, why does it seem that people that write hit pieces always seem to look like this? I don't know. I just, I thought it was just an American thing, but I guess it's a Dutch thing as well if you know what I mean. Okay, so let's get into the article. Totally petrified, Caroline read the letter that she had just received. It came from a British film producer. He wrote that he was working on a movie about the life of her ex-partner, Wim Hof. The producer wanted to hear her side of the story. So I guess this was essentially the impetus for the article, basically a British film producer who was making a movie on Wim Hof reached out to Wim Hof's ex-wife and this essentially is what prompted this entire hit piece. And I guess that they basically want us to believe that this whole thing was entirely organic, basically some reporter wasn't fishing around looking for stuff to write this hit piece on, but rather Wim's ex-wife found out that a movie was being made about Wim and she just couldn't bear it. So she had to contact the Volksgrant and spill the beans and get into the dirty laundry of their relationship. So I am just going to read for Caroline, age 65, and her children, the news was bitter. For them, the name Wim Hof is synonymous with years of aggression, physical violence, humiliation, and manipulation. And in Caroline's case, also sexual abuse. They know the Iceman, as Wim Hof calls himself, as a mean drunk with an explosive character and delusions of grandeur. Okay, now... I would like to bring up what one of Wim Hof's daughter has posted on Instagram in response. So this is Laura Hoff. Laura, I believe, is Wim's daughter from his first wife. And just to remind everyone, Wim's first wife had committed suicide in Spain from jumping out of a window. We will, of course, get into that later. So anyway, this is from Laura Hoff. The Volksgrant is lying again. How coincidental that the Volksgrant is now running a story about his ex now that her alimony is over. Shame on the Volksgrant, truly shame. What is the motive of the Volksgrant to delve into the private life of Wim from 23 years ago and act as a gossip magazine? So basically, yeah, this is Wim Hof's daughter saying that this is just a gossip piece, hit piece, as I like to call it. She calls it a gossip magazine. And basically, she's also saying that Caroline, Wim's ex-wife, is doing this because her alimony is over. And I guess she wants in on some of that money that Wim Hof is going to be making. And it is interesting to note that Caroline and Wim's son, Noah, who we'll talk about later on, apparently just turned 21. So maybe like in, uh, in Amsterdam, you stop paying child support or whatever when the kid turns 21. So that does sort of check out with the age of Noah and everything that it does seem a little fishy that the kid turns 21. And now all of a sudden, Caroline wants to start spilling the, daughty, the dirty laundry on Wim. Of course, they want you to believe that this is because a movie's coming out. Who knows? 
Laura seems to think otherwise. Moving on. For example, in 2012, Hoff was sentenced by the court to community service and a fine because he had assaulted Caroline's eldest son, Christian. So Christian was Caroline's son, not Wim's, and apparently uh, Wim assaulted him. The incident resulted in a temporary straining order imposed on him by the mayor of Amsterdam, to which he was no longer allowed to come near the family. The explanation states that Hoff had used physical violence against Caroline, Christian, and Noah and made death threats to them. In 2015, the Dutch Child Welfare Council concluded that Wim Hoff had committed so much psychological violence against his son Noah, so Noah once again is Wim's actual son, that the boy never felt safe with him. The court therefore decided that Wim had forfeited his right of parental access. So yeah, once again, I believe Noah is actually the only son Wim and Caroline had together. And it does seem like Caroline kept Noah away from Wim, you know, filed the restraining order. And ultimately, it just seems like this is just a highly, highly dysfunctional family. You know, we have restraining orders and just people taking others away from each other. And, you know, in this particular case, it does seem like the courts had been involved, you know, with that restraining order, which definitely doesn't look great for Wim, because obviously it means that Wim, Wim lost in court. You know, as for me as an American, it just it's really hard for me to understand what the court system is like in the Netherlands and, you know, what this actually means on a grander scale. Like, is it easy to just go into a court and file a restraining order against an ex or boyfriend or girlfriend or, or not, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to say, but it definitely seems like Noah, Wim's actual son, did not enjoy hanging out and being around his father, Wim Hof, and therefore a restraining order was necessary. And, you know, to me, it seems like this part, this restraining order part of the hit piece is really the only part that I've found that, that really bears any, any weight. Um, you know, like I said, having going through the court system. So you do have proof that this happened and the courts definitely did decide that Wim was, you know, unfit to be around his, his son Noah. Of course, we do have to remember that this happened a very, very long time ago, like over 20 years ago. So once again, take all that with a grain of salt and always ask yourself, like, why is this coming out now? Why is this surfacing now? Wim's been famous since like 2014. So, you know, waited a very long time to, uh, to bring this, bring this stuff out. But, uh, anyway, moving along with the article in his written answer to the 44 questions from the Volksgrant, Wim denies having ever been violent. He views the accusations as manipulation by his ex-wife, Caroline. It is obvious that she's on a warpath and now wants to make everything look different from how it was. Even though they haven't seen or spoken to Wim Hof in 11 years, Caroline and her children are still struggling with the feelings of unsafety and inferiority on a daily basis. So that's, of course, Wim's response. It appears that the publication did reach out to Wim for comment, and this was his response. This was his comment. This is really all we get. I mean, which, you know, obviously we can see the bias here that apparently they, they sent him 44 questions and this is essentially what we get. Wim basically just saying untrue, overstated, and obviously very biased, obviously trying to tell a story with a particular narrative. You know, it is good that he, he does deny being violent. So that does count for something that, you know, Wim says he wasn't violent. You know, very much, a, you know, outside of the, the stuff in court, it, it, this whole thing is a very much a he said, she said, you know. And, you know, you always have to remember that family matters can certainly be fueled with passion. And the article goes into how Caroline and Wim met. Obviously, they both had previous kids from previous marriages. And uh, there's just a lot of a lot of fluff from Caroline's point of view about her and Wim's relationship. You know, nothing, nothing overly important until we get to this part in the article. The first time Caroline suffered serious physical violence was 
When she was a few months pregnant, as she stated in her report to the police, as she remembered it, Hoff confronted her in the living room one evening. He slapped me in the face, Caroline now states, then dragged me through the room by my hair and tried to kick me in the belly. I was just about able to hide behind the couch, so the kick only grazed me, then he left. Hoff, of course, denies that this incident took place, but he does admit that there were disagreements as Caroline always knew how to quickly get under my skin. So that's uh, that's what Wim has to say for that. But yeah, obviously that's a terribly awful scene. I think we can all kind of picture it in our heads. You know, Wim, of course, of course, denies it. Um, and, you know, I don't really know what to say. You know, I mean, Wim denies it. She says it happened. In my experience, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. You know, so some combination of what they both said um, but you know this is this is all we have um, you know not good which you'll hear me probably say throughout throughout this and look I'm sure that there were many fights between Wim and Caroline but from what I can tell you know their son so basically it, it alleges that he was swinging at her while she was pregnant but you know good news is the son was born and to my knowledge was was healthy so so that's good uh, you know, and, the, and then of course, you know, the Volksgrant adds these these little blurbs in the article, uh, which have nothing to do with the story per se, uh, but they do add studies into domestic violence show that it relatively often begins or worsens during pregnancy and a bunch of other things about domestic violence so we can see you know they they definitely have their what they're trying to go with you know the story very much is is about domestic abuse which is just such a such a tough topic and not really something that i really want to be talking about on the cold plunge podcast you know i'm definitely not really uh qualified to to talk about these things but you know i just want to you know kind of go through it and, and just kind of break it down as best as i can so anyway you know like i said six months after this first domestic abuse incident his son Noah was born and not long after that we have this next part early 2003 Caroline ended up in A&E because she had been assaulted a cast iron pan on the right elbow abused by my husband the doctor noted in her medical file her bruised elbow was bandaged but the courts called this a greatly exaggerated incident claiming that he isn't a violent man so once again, one person says one thing, the courts in this case took Wim's side. You know, this this paragraph making it look good for Wim. And, uh, and then we have more gossip from Wim's stepkids. The children too sometimes fell victim to Wim's physical aggression. He kicked me one time and also pushed me once, Christian. So this would be Wim's stepson told the police. He elbowed me in the face, damaging my tongue. Natalie, his stepdaughter, stated that at the time he said it was an accident. He also threw hot coffee in my face. <laughs> I was not allowed. Oh, God. I was not allowed to stand inside his energy circle. My face was all red. Wim denies all of this. So, you know, it's funny, like the author kind of like puts these awful things in these awful statements. And then, you know, just to kind of cover her. She adds, Wim denies all of this. So once again, two sides to the story. And, you know, of course, like I keep saying, you have to always remember this was all 20 years ago. So interesting that it's all coming out now. Suspicious timing. Alcohol would make Wim Hof more aggressive, Caroline and her children say. There is often alcohol involved. He drinks six half liters of beer every day, to which Wim says, I was drinking at that time. Yes, I was drinking, but I also did my job. So we do get an admission here that Wim was drinking, which I don't think anyone's surprised about. Um, I you know I've talked in previous videos that Wim did appear to be an alcoholic or ex-alcoholic of sorts you know just sort of a mess you know we could see just looking at him so definitely suffered some alcohol abuse moving along the article points out that wim was also in lawsuits because of his breathing techniques and i've discussed this on previous episodes but just to summarize people did his breathing techniques 
in water and a few of those people have unfortunately drowned and died and Wim has been sued for that a couple times. You know, I talked about this at length, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, those deaths weren't really his fault as he does have warnings all over his website not to practice the breathing exercises near water. So anyway, this part is, uh, is really interesting. In 1998, Wim Hof said that his first wife had died in a run-of-the-mill car crash. However, in 2022, Hoff stated in an interview that she had jumped from an apartment building eight stories down. Now, this is all from Rob Hoff, who is Wim's oldest brother. From the very beginning until Olaya's death in 1995, there was a lot of domestic violence in their marriage. So basically, that was all Wim Hof's brother saying that. And then Rob's brother's ex-girlfriend wrote in an email that she remembers Wim beating Olaya. Once again, Olaya was Wim's first wife who committed suicide. But she can't remember who actually told her. So basically, I guess these Volksgram people reached out to like every single person in Wim's life ever. So like... They went to Wim's oldest brother's ex-girlfriend, and she was the one who said that oh, that Wim also was abusing his ex-wife, Olaya. Which, you know, this is just classic hit piece stuff, and the article literally says right under all of that that the court calls these allegations absurd and informs us that they are absolutely baseless. His four oldest children have written to the Volksgrant that they have never seen their father commit acts of violence. So, there you go. You know, this whole thing, the author kind of says something very wild, alleging that something really bad happens, and then she'll always sort of cover her basis by saying, well, none of this may actually be true. Now, some more interesting stuff. In 2010, I guess Caroline and Wim were still living together. So keep that in mind. You know, these two, they, they were married. I think they were married for almost a decade. You know, and obviously probably a very roller coaster of emotions type of thing. But they did date for a while. Um, and in 2010, Caroline finally decides to kick Wim out of her house or out of their house. Caroline's report to the police shows that that night, Hoff took a plate from his cupboard, pushed it against the side of her head, and said, if I smash this, you will suffer severe ear damage, and it will go into your eye, and that will be damaged as well. And then, in an unguarded moment, she was able to sneak outside. She called her oldest son and asked him to quickly come over. From then, they filed a police report. This just goes on. They got in a fight in which Christian suffered a nosebleed and a black eye. Caroline, meanwhile, managed to call the police just when Wim attempted to throw a large glass fruit ball at Christian. So, you know, just one crazy night in 2010, just fighting and throwing punches, throwing fruit plates. I mean, this is... It's just, it's just bad all around, you know, you know, and I, it's just, it's not a good situation. I, I just don't even know what to say. It's obviously, it's weird that, that this is, this is, this is coming out now. It just feels like just, just such a dysfunctional, just awful family. Anyway, all of this prompted the restraining order against Wim. And Wim was ultimately sentenced to do 40 hours of community service and pay a fine of 350 euros. So as much as Wim Hof wants, you know, denies a lot of these allegations, you know, it's tough to deny this particular one because, you know, he actually did get sentenced to do community service and, and pay a fine. And, you know, we move on to this section, this section called New Forms of Aggression, which basically says that in 2011, after all the court stuff, Wim actually then went on to force Caroline to still have sex with him, sometimes with Noah, his son, watching. So that's awful. Wim, of course, denies this, which I really hope it, that's true, that it didn't happen. But I mean, yeah, it, this, is, this is just, it's awful stuff, you know. Uh, we have here in July 2013, Noah met with his father for the last time. So 2013, I guess they, they cut off all ties. In 2015, the court denied Hoff's request for an arrangement for parental access. 
So yeah, I mean, ultimately, Wim lost all custody of his child, Noah. And yeah, that's basically the article. Just, just not good. Wim has, of course, responded. I saw he did an interview, and I believe I read somewhere that he's actually gonna be suing the Volksgrant for defamation. Once again, not really sure how that works outside of the United States, but that's, that's what I hear. You know, and in Wim Hof's response, he basically emphasizes that the article fails to consider both sides of the story, which I do agree with him on. This article is very guilty of journalistic bias. And you know, while he does have, you know, while his kids with Caroline don't necessarily like him, you know, he does have a bunch of kids with his first wife, Elias, who still very much like him or very much working with him and part of his practice and embracing him and defending him as I showed with Laura Hoff. And she also has a, a sister who very much supports, supports Wim. The article definitely, you know, portrays Wim as the bad guy and his ex-wife as the victim. Unfortunately, we'll never really know the true story uh, with, with all of these things. And you know, you just know that anytime that there's some bad news about a biohacker, you have Scott Carney who peeks his little head up to see the sun. This dude absolutely lives for these hit pieces and he put out a whole video with his thoughts and his takes if you wanna check it out. But there was one interesting part in, in his video which I will play now. But there were also people who were like, yeah, I've seen weird stuff with him too. And one of those people who approached me was a guy named John Viabrera, who was one of Wim's managers. Okay, I'm just gonna read a part of, of that. Wim's wife died in Spain after falling out of a window. Wim was a climbing instructor there and was eventually imprisoned for eight weeks as a suspect for pushing his wife out of the window. That's what he wrote to me. And when I got that message, and this was about two years ago, um, I read his note and I really tried to corroborate Viabrera's account. You know, I have been in touch with the police in Spain. I've been talking to family members in Pamplona. Uh, but it's really difficult as an American reporter to get any information out of the Spanish government, let alone uh, a death that happened almost 30 years ago. So I I've never been able to corroborate the fact that there might have been a murder investigation against Wim Hof for the death of his wife, Olaya. So yeah, interesting stuff here for sure. Of course, you know, as Scott says, he wasn't able to prove any of it. Um, but so this is basically just just from one guy. But super super interesting, you know. If Wim if Wim really was in a Spanish jail, for uh, as a suspect for potentially throwing his his wife out a window, no bueno. Uh, but you know, like I said, we'll we'll never know. But uh, you know, interesting uh, interesting allegations from Scott Carney. You know, and he he definitely he's good on this you know he admits that it's it's just an account from one person he hasn't been able to uh to validate or disvalidate it but he's just throwing it out there makes for an interesting interesting video that's for sure and of course you know obviously i would i would feel absolutely terrible for whim if none of this none of scott carney stuff none of this volkscran article article were true but you just know I think we all know deep down that, that Wim Hof definitely has some skeletons in his closet for sure. And honestly, with this particular thing, I, I wouldn't be surprised, similar to Scott, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it were true. You know, I'll, I'll just put it like this, because I don't want to say too much more about it. But do I like Wim? Yes. Do I trust Wim? No. Do I think Wim is a good guy? Not really. Do I think he's helped millions of people? Yes, I do. Would I ever have Wim Hof babysit my children? Absolutely not. And you know, my take of course, you know, I don't really have too much of a take other than it's all really bad stuff. Does any of this really affect my life? Not really. You know, to me, What's most disappointing about all of this is that the Wim Hof movie has been suspended. Quite frankly, I didn't even know that they were making a movie about Wim Hof, but apparently they were making a 
movie, a biopic of his life. The movie was probably going to be called The Iceman, which, you know, realistically, The Iceman is such a good name for a movie title, like such a no-brainer movie title to just call it The Iceman and have it be about Wim Hof. You know, anyway, Wim was going to be played by Joseph Fiennes. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but w- Joseph Fiennes is the guy from The Handmaid's Tale. So, yeah, I mean, this probably would have been an absolutely awesome movie, and it sucks that they have suspended it. But if I know Hollywood, I guess this isn't really technically Hollywood, but if I know the movie industry, my money says that they will ultimately continue the movie, and it will get released. This is most likely just a publicity stunt to say, oh, we, we hear the, about the hit piece, we're going to pause the movie, blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyway, now I really and I just I just want to take this time now to uh, to deliver a message to the producers and directors and really anyone related involved with the movie. So if you're not involved with the Wim Hof movie, you can just skip ahead to the next part. Or once again, this is only for people involved with the Wim Hof movie. Okay, guys. All this stuff here, all this stuff, this is, this is the good stuff. This is how you make a compelling movie. The drama, the domestic abuse, the alcoholism. Guys, this, this stuff, this, all this gossip, this is the movie. This is your arc. You guys have a layup here. You know, you could do a whole movie, The Dark Side of Wim Hof. I mean, this is, this is the good stuff. And then, you know, you, you bring it back around and you show how he's helped people and get the good music going. I mean, guys, come on. Let's not make the Marvel version of Wim Hof's life. Let's make the DC version of it. Let's make it dark and gritty with potential murdering of his ex-wife and then domestic abuse, you know. Let's really bring out this rock star biohacker yoga guru Wim Hof character, please, I'm begging you, make this the awesome movie that we all want. Okay, so now at this point, everyone else can come back and I'll just do the outro for this video. As I always like to say, don't hero worship. Don't worship your heroes. Everyone has flaws. Wim, quite frankly, probably has more flaws than most people. But nothing that he's done in his past, in his personal life, will really truly ever take away from what he's done for cold plunging, biohacking, and just the overall health of the world. Clearly this guy, he is very, very flawed. But you know, to me, it it makes sense. Like I'm not really surprised about all of this because you know, quite frankly, normal people don't think to just sit in cold ice water and think, that's a good thing. Like my dad's never thought to sit in, sit in ice water. Mo- most normal people don't, you know, in order to, in order to come up with this whole cold bath thing. I mean, you have to have some demons in your closet, you know, and you know, artists as Wim is definitely an artist, you know, they are constantly tormented. They have their dark passengers. And I just find that more and more in my life that People that give advice on things are often the ones who need that advice the most, and they're often struggling with the problems that they are helping others to fix. For example, you know, influencers whose content is all about depression and anxiety are actually people that struggle with depression and anxiety. Like I've never once thought, oh, I'm gonna make a video about depression. Why? Because I've never suffered from depression, like no more than the average person. So I don't make that my whole personality. So, you know, usually people that make their whole personality about something, it's because they're trying to fill a void. You know, I often think it's that nutrition influencers, you know, often struggle with food. Like most of these nutrition influencers out there, they're actually just low key sugar addicts. And people that love fitness, a lot of these guys used to be fat. You know, Dave Goggins is such a good example of this, as a guy who used to be a fat slob and now he's this, you know, don't quit, hustle hard, you know, runner hardo guy you know it's 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 classic and of course i'd imagine all these yoga people on instagram i bet you they have some real dark passengers if you know what i mean so once again i'm not surprised that the father of jumping into freezing cold ice water and just sitting there freezing 
has some skeletons in his closet. Wim Hof, the alcoholic biohacking guru who changed the world for the better, make that movie. This is the Cold Plunge Podcast with me, Mike Gorman. Be sure to check out the video version of this podcast on our YouTube channel and check the show notes for any references, studies, or links to anything I spoke about on our website at plungereviews.com slash podcasts.